Hello everyone, and today I will show you 10 must-know settings that will give you an in-game benefit, more FPS, less input lag, and in general just make your life better. Overall, I can promise you that these settings and tips will help you improve your gameplay experience. So without further ado, let's get into it, baby! Mouse or controller dead zone. Let me first explain the gist of it. The lower the dead zone, the lower the amount of movement you have to make with your mouse or controller stick to change your guard. This means there is a lower input delay between you choosing to block a direction and actually block it. To simplify it even further, you block faster if the setting is very low. The downside to it is that you might accidentally change your guard by mistake since your mouse is very sensitive. So you must find a balance between the two. Here are my settings, but my recommendation is to constantly lower it as much as possible without too much accidental movement. Lower the dead zone, get used to it, then lower it again and repeat until you get to zero. Step by step, do it gradually, and if you can discipline yourself to not move your stick when you are not guarding, go for the maximum potential. But most of us, including myself, cannot do it, so we must find a decent ratio. To change it, go to Options, Advanced Controls, and from here, it's different for controller and mouse and keyboard. For controller players, you have a setting called Guard Dead Zone, on which you adjust from 0 to 20. The lower it is, the better, as long as you manage to not accidentally change your guard. For PC, there is no Guard Dead Zone, but the inverse of this setting is Sensitivity which you want to have as high as possible, again, while being comfortable. I repeat, to lower guard dead zone for mouse and keyboard, you have to have high sensitivity. Anyway, before we get into the next tip, this video is sponsored by Project Orochi, a streetwear clothing brand inspired by Japanese mythology and art. With many designs from fan-favorite video games such as For Honor, Dark Souls, Sekiro, and so on, you can improve your fashion game today. Personally, I am very happy about this sponsorship as I used to shop from them before they approached me. I even received a Torah hoodie with this promotion, which easily became my new favorite sweater. For the For Honor fans, you literally have three pages of streetwear to choose from. Cyber Orochi is too good not to be recommended, but I also really like the Peacekeeper hoodie with her two daggers on the arms. There is a high chance that at least one of your For Honor mains has a dedicated design since more than half of the game's roster is featured at least once. I can say from experience that I am delighted with my shopping service even before they sponsored me. Use code LIGHTSEA at the checkout for a discount and use only my links in the description below to support my channel. Cycle targeting system. The old lock on system had a major problem when switching targets against more than two enemies. The way it worked is you'd only be able to switch onto the next closest target, which made it impossible for you to switch on a third opponent that is behind his other two teammates. This was very frustrating, but Ubisoft did come up with a solution that ended up being even worse than what we had before. How? The new system fixed the problem of not being able to lock on anyone else outside the two closest enemies to you, but it created another issue. Let's say you are team fighting against opponents A, B, C, D in that order. You 2v2 with A and B, but can still lock on C and D. Now in that 2v2, you switch from A to B, and I want to switch back from B to A, but to do it, you have to switch three times. You must first go through C, then through D, and then back to A. This is very bad as it makes it very hard to switch on the exact targets you want to, but there was a promised feature that would solve this. They said if you wait 250 ms, the new system would restart itself and start acting like the old system. By this I mean you switch from A to B, wait 250 ms, and then switch back to A, which is the new closest target. But that is not the case at all. Look in this clip how long I'm waiting between my target switches and it still cycles between opponents. 
Most Pro For Honor players still use the old system which has its issues, but it is still better than the new one. To use the old system, which is what Papa Yeet recommends, go to Settings, Controls and untick Enable Cycle Target System. Exit Guard Mode Rule Many of you do not even know of this setting, but it is crucial. It's a setting that gives you an instant in-game advantage if you enable it. This setting is helpful because the game will not automatically unlock you during executions. Why is that good? Well, you will often be interrupted out of your executions, and if you do not have the setting enabled, the opponent can do a max out of lock punish on you. Basically, giving the enemy free damage, which can be up to free heavies in Aramusha's case. So if you do not want to give the opponent free damage, enable this setting. To enable this, go to controls, scroll down until you see exit guard rule and choose never. Graphic settings. So I cannot exactly say what graphic settings you should run because that is dependent on your setup. But what I can offer you is five settings that increase your FPS with minor graphical change. In this order, you want to disable motion blur, dynamic shadows to off, ambient occlusion to off or HBO plus, anti-aliasing to off, and lastly, render scaling, which has by far the biggest effect, but also has a big trail. These five settings from lowest to highest are the ones that have the most effect on your FPS. What I recommend is changing them one by one and then benchmarking until you are satisfied with your FPS to graphics ratio. One input for zone attack. If, like me, you have trouble properly inputting zone attack and want the maximum consistency on it, then this tip is for you. You can bind both heavies and lights second binding to the same button in order to create one single input for zone attack. If you remember instances where you misinputed a zone, I recommend just adding this setting and giving it a try. Of course, this is PC only as console has very little freedom when it comes to keybinds. Input lag. Many things induce input lag, but I will try to mention three of the most influenceable and easily adjustable reasons respectively full screen, vSync, and aspect ratio. All of these settings are found in the graphic options, so let's cover all of them quickly. Full screen has to be on. Don't use borderless, it creates input lag, same with windowed. vSync always off. This should be common gamer knowledge, but if you didn't know, now you do. And aspect ratio. Make sure your aspect ratio matches the ratio of your monitor. Otherwise, you might have extra input delay that you do not want. Other than that, there are many things that create input lag. Biggest factor is your monitor. So I recommend Googling the best settings of the specific model you have. Full block binding. Really important if you're playing a character that has either full block, Sifu, or any type of stance really, do not keep that binding on C. That is literally the worst default bind. I really recommend putting it on mouse, assuming that you listen to me already and have one mouse binding for dodge. The second one should be your other defensive move, which is full block. Go to key binds, scroll down to full block and put it on mouse five or four. Dodge binding. Unfortunately, a PC only tip Dodge on space button is super hard for reactions and every pro reactionary player in the game has their dodge binding on their mouse. I have it on the side mouse, mouse 4 specifically, but some people even have the drastic change of dodging with left click, the light attack button, and use space to light attack instead. I recommend keeping dodge on space and adding a secondary key bind on side mouse button. You can do it in-game by assigning a key bind for the specific action, in this case, dodge, on the second column, which is empty by default. Even if you're not a reactionary player, I still recommend this setting because it makes it easier to dodge. Target switch bind. The default binding is alt on PC, 
which is very inconvenient considering you have to sacrifice your space finger to target switch. A very good alternative is Q or E, but I really recommend you switch from Alt. And lastly, we have Field of View. This setting is amazing as it gives a clear advantage in teamfights. The higher you put it, the more you see, which is why everyone has it on maximum and is what I also recommend you put it on. To do it, go to display and put field of view 290. The only time you'd want to have it lower is if you're playing duels. Then the opposite applies because lower FOV makes attack indicators bigger, which makes reacting to attacks easier. To be super optimal, change it depending what game mode you play. Max for Dominion, lower for duels. And that is it for all the tips. Thanks for watching. If you yourself have another tip and you want to let me know, write it down in the comment section below. I will heart it and hopefully more people can see it. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and I will see you next time, Pepe Army. Bye!